so the library of my life. So Tiana T made what she calls a cringeworthy video. And I want to say I see your cringe and I raise you cringe and lazy because I didn't even bother to print out a board like you did. I'm just doing this all digitally because honestly, printing costs money. I like the video, so that's why I'm doing it here. I'll link the description to the original video by Tiana. I guess this qualifies as a booktube tag and I've stayed away from those because I'm in denial about in any way being part of booktube, even though 90% of my YouTube diet is right now booktube channels. You know, you spend a bit of time watching Read with Cindy and then the addiction kicks in, believe me. So I've got a number of books to go through. Library of my life, which books have had a huge impact and shaped me in both my reading and my writing. And I'm actually going to leave <laughs> the only writing that I have public uh, down in the description below, which is an old Instagram account where I put very silly poems on. And please do ignore the two silly poems that I have on this YouTube channel. I was going to do more of those, but yeah, you know, uh, you can judge me by those. I don't want you to judge me by the others. So those will happily stay offline. The first one that I want to talk about is The Little Mermaid. No, not that one. This one. The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. Original title, Den Lillen Haven Fruer, but I don't know if my Danish is up to par. It was published in uh, 1937, so it's completely in the public domain. And I was read this as a fairy tale when I was a child. And I do not recommend you do that because this fairy tale is dark, but then most fairy tales are dark. So if you're used to the sanitized version that Disney put out and other adaptations, yeah, you're gonna be in for a bit of a shock. I will prepare you a potion and you must swim ashore with it tomorrow before sunrise and then sit down and drink it. Your tail will then disappear and shrivel up into what human beings call neat legs. But mind, it will hurt you as much as if a sharp sword were thrust through you Everybody that sees you will say you are the most beautiful mortal ever seen. You will retain the floating elegance of your gait. No dancer will move as lightly as you, but every step you take will be like threading upon such sharp knives that you would think your blood must flow if you choose to put up with sufferings like these. I have the power to help you. I read it originally in Dutch and I've, I've reread it in English quite a few times. I honestly would love to read the original Danish version. But for the sake of this video, I just want to say that uh, The Little Mermaid has been extremely influential. When looking back, this book deals heavily with themes of gender and liminality. And I want to do a deep dive into that because gender and liminality are two things that heavenly featured in my life growing up as a trans person and non-binary person liminality being a term that refers to the state of being in between two phases in life you look at rites of passage and you have many rites of passages that we all go through whether it is from childhood to adulthood etc so this liminality is a very strong theme about a young mermaid trying to become human However, how that plays out in The Little Mermaid is obviously to extend very gendered. I really want to do that deep dive. Uh, if I have time, I will do it in the hope that more than one person will watch it. But The Little Mermaid had a huge impact on my life and how I learned to see myself and actually kicked off my own journey as somebody who questions a lot about my gender. And here I am, non-binary trans. I took a detour past trans women for me to get there, but I'm here. Secondly, we have a book that I read in a very particular circumstances. And those particular circumstances was a homeless shelter <laughs> in Amsterdam. Uh, yes, I spent some time in those things, uh, which uh, if you're ever trans, I can point you out that homeless shelters are one of the most horrific places to be in. And it is Anne-Sophie Brasme's Respirer. I only have the French copy here. I'm going to Google if the English copy is somewhere around. Also, I read it originally in Dutch. My French is good, but not that good. And I couldn't get a hold of the Dutch version when I wanted to rebuy this book. J'avais peu d'amis. Les quelques élèves qui m'avaient accepté dans leur groupe faisaient généralement partie de la tête de classe. Je l'ai trouvé débile, insignifiante. Nos sujets de conversation 
ne dépassait pas l'horizon de notre petite vie bien rangée de collégienne. Je ne faisais que jouer un rôle et j'haïssais mon personnage. Apologies for my French pronunciation. C'était trop longtemps depuis que j'ai parlé français et c'est difficile maintenant. Um, this book is intense and I do not recommend it either. <laughs> especially not if you're dealing with mental health issues, especially if there are a lot of issues of gaslighting and abuse that trigger you. This is basically about a friendship that goes horribly wrong, where an enormous amount of gaslighting, an enormous amount of obsessive behavior takes place and ends up exploding in an extreme way. However, it is written, or at least in the translation that I originally read it in, it was written in a beautiful and deep and harsh way that made me question a lot about myself and made me really reflect on how we as humans engage with each other. This takes those issues to an extreme and it is not an easy read. However, I can't deny that this book has a huge impact on me. And this is the thing about a library of my life and books that have impacted me. Not all of those books will be good books. Uh, I have no idea how other people will receive this book if they ever read it. There's a reason why I never recommended this book because this book holds a special place in my life and I don't necessarily know if I want to explore that place with someone else. Next book. Sophie's World, or Sophie's Werden in the original title, or Sophie's Wereld, because I read it again in Dutch because I was young. This book is beautiful. And this book is important to me because it sparked my interest in anything philosophical and anything existential. It allowed me to explore a sense of existential questions that I had. I read this when I was still in school, and I think I was around 12 or 13 and it created a very annoying person out of me. I remember reading this book and after each chapter getting into the most ridiculous arguments with every teacher that I could find about philosophical questions and questioning them at every turn about is this really what you're saying or can we deconstruct it in a more philosophical way and I think after some months they were so tired of seeing my face. However, this book, while it obviously has a very Western approach to philosophy, it is a really good and accessible introduction to the subject of philosophy. I'll wrap them into a novel that is very engaging to me. My interest in philosophy as it grew when I was reading this book only made it more enjoyable and the sort of middle twist that came into the book really, really made me question things from an existential point of view. And actually all of his books kind of do that. He has a very particular way of telling stories within stories within stories. I've bought it three times because I've lost it many times over the years. I will reread it once in a while. It, it keeps my sense of questioning alive. Next two books. <laughs> Both books have no English translation as far as I know. Uh, but I need to put them on here because we're talking about the library of my life and I hope maybe someone somewhere would translate these in English because I think the world would be better off if these books were translated in English. One of these author's books has been translated in English and that is Crusade in Jeans, which I will link down below. The first book I read uh, was Crusade in Jeans, but the book that really kicked off my love for this author was uh, Hasse Simon Zuchter. And this book is beautiful and I think if it came out now and in English it would be classified as YA. It has a strong female protagonist that rebels against the establishments uh, and ends up leading a band of mercenaries that fights in one of the back then civil wars in the lower Netherlands, basically in Belgium, Flanders, the Netherlands. Um, it is historical fiction. That's not to say that the character in the way it's portrayed is real. There is a reference at the end of the book that implies that the character might have been real, but in very much the way the book is written, it's, it's, it's kind of like a YA protagonist in many ways. For me growing up, seeing a young, strong woman dress up like a man to go to war is something that beyond Mulan I hadn't really encountered. So after watching Mulan and reading this, it, it really resonated with me, but also really resonated with the sense of this person coming from 
a home situation that was problematic again resonates with my personal life and then essentially running away and striking it out on their own and <laughs> becoming a mercenary that is essentially dressing up like a man sort of twisting gender around yeah also resonates with me i think it's no surprise Jans geslokken vendel was intussen aangevuld tot 18 man met de kapitein en hasse meegeteld waren ze dus met hun twintigen en hasse telde mee Jan had haar een paard bezorgd, een bruine merrie, mak maar vlug ter been. Ze leerde er snel op rijden, op een mannenzadel, want ze droeg dezelfde kleren als de soldeniers om haar heen. Hasse Simons dochter, by Thea Beckman. Het second boek by Thea Beckman is named Kinderen van Moeder Aarde, Children of Mother Earth. And this is a sci-fi novel, kind of sort of a sci-fi novel. It's basically set in the future after World War III, and then, then the Earth has twisted around so that the areas around the North Pole have become temperate. So Greenland, which is now ice covered, at least, you know, for now, you know, never know what climate change is going to do, but in Greenland becomes this beautiful paradise and becomes ruled by a matriarchal system. Uh, you have a matriarchal head of state, uh, Konega, and then you have essentially a system where it has been decided that because of the history of men screwing up the world and patriarchy being the cause of a lot of the problems in society, that they will institute a matriarchal society where women have all the political decision-making power. And in this context, a young prince, the only son, the only child of the ruler of the Konega, comes of age and deals with the fact I don't know if you could hear that helicopter. Uh, Christian, who is the son of the head of state, grows up and he has to deal with the fact that he is a boy in a matriarchal society. And essentially, even though he is quote unquote royalty, he has no say in government. And his sole purpose is actually is to produce the next heir. I read this book when I was still a teenager and it had a huge influence on me in, you know, exploring a world outside the current patriarchal world that we live in now and what would that mean and what would that look like and what would some of the flaws be now it doesn't overly go into that too deep because it's still considered to be a youth novel it definitely sparked a lot of thoughts in my young head back then now since we're going in chronological order we're going with dune dune i read when i was 16 years old I read it also in Dutch first, and then I picked up the English version. I love this book. Look, I could only pick one book for my library of life. Otherwise, I think at least the first three books, Dune, Dune Messiah and Children of Dune would have been on there. But let's just start with the original one. This is my 16th copy because again, books keep disappearing from my life. And with that, a small PSA to all of you who have borrowed books from me and never returned them. I hope you will burn in the deepest circle of Dante's Inferno, in hell, together with all of those people who talk at the theater. I hope you will burn. All right, moving on. Dune. It is the first big sci-fi book that I read and I loved it. Now, it has its issues, yes, and it was a hard thing to get through but I read it once, it stayed with me, and it really influenced how I looked upon every science fiction afterwards, because obviously a lot of science fiction has been influenced by it, whether it's Star Wars, etc. This book really explores themes that are still very relevant. Uh, ecology, climate change, the idea of limited resources. The world building in this book is solid, and it helped me lose myself in this sort of alternative reality. And, and yeah, the litany of fear from this book is something that I still know by heart and is still something that I repeat to myself. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I shall face my fear. I shall permit it to pass over me and through me. And when the fear has gone past, I shall turn my inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone past, there shall be nothing. Only I will remain. A lot of the philosophical themes that come through it really influenced the way I, I started looking at the world. And I think it also contributed to me being somewhat pretentious about my life and about how I think. But I, 
I think considering the fact that I lived most of my youth alone, as in literally alone and half of it homeless, it was necessary for me to find a grounding in something. To get with Soviet world, this book definitely helped me to find meaning to all of the shit I was going through. No library of my life will be ever complete with this one. 1984 by George Orwell. This is a book that introduced me to dystopias and I'm still very addictive to dystopian stories. I still lament the fact is that I haven't seen dystopias done as well as it was done by George Orwell. George Orwell obviously roots his, roots his writing in real life. I mean, he was part of the international brigades that ended up going to Spain to fight in the civil war against Franco and the fascists. Um, and he has seen both the good and the bad of you know, fascism as well as, you know, communism and specifically this, you know, this kind of written as a commentary on Stalinist communism. This book made me question a lot of things. It made me question the world that I lived in very much. And I read this at the start when the internet was just becoming this huge monster that it is becoming now. It's interesting to see what parts of this book are still relevant now. A lot of it is. 1984 to this day is still a cautionary warning that we all should pay attention to. I enjoy this book and I enjoy actually comparing it to Brave New World in a certain sense because George Orwell presents a very repressive society where not just thought is being controlled, but thought is controlled equally through a very puritanical morality around sexuality, etc. The main character ends up rebelling very much in sort of a romantic subplot, if you might say so. And he very much rebels together with Julia, the other character, through an expression of their sexuality. The act of living for them, the act of living, loving, and, and exploring their sexuality becomes an act of rebellion. Uh, a small act of rebellion, but still one that's very important to them. And that resonated to me because obviously considering that, you know, by the time I read this book, the rep repressed queerness in me <laughs> was, you know, roaring its head up, it definitely had a huge impact on me. I think it is a very easy and accessible read. If you're looking, however, for, for books that are more contemporary and provide some sort of decent ending or decent wrap up and sort of sort of hope by the end it's uh, no there is no hope in this book but there is an understanding that even in the smallest acts of self-awareness and in the smallest acts of trying to be yourself and exploring your own desires you can push back that really is something that i've tried to live up to for most of my life tried and failed often but still so that's the library of my life for now. These are the books that really influenced me. I could go on and on because I've got a lot more actually. I, Yong Chang's Wild Swan is not on here, which is a tragedy uh, and so many others. There should be also a lot more uh, comic books on there. They're not also a tragedy, but I had to start somewhere. Unfortunately, also, when you're talking about the library of my life, as in the books that really influenced me, half of them are going to be in other languages. That is an unfortunate reality of somebody who's not a native English speaker and has only become a dominant English speaker later in their lives. Right now, I read and speak a lot more English than I do in any other language, but the Dutch, and to a certain extent, some French still lingers, and also some Latin for some reason. So, I hope you enjoy this. I guess this, this, I hope this doesn't make me a booktuber. I mean, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Luckily I'm doing this when I still have very few subscribers. So at least not a lot of people will see the cringe of the content that I'm putting forward. Cause you know, I'm a professional and let's end it there.